Hi, I really struggle to rate my books um, from one to five stars. I always feel like that doesn't really grasp how I feel about different kinds of books. And Book Roast has this amazing Excel spreadsheet called Core Pile, which is an acronym for seven, six different categories that you rate your books on. And um, I thought I'd do that with my January reading. So I've got the Excel sheet in front of me. I've never used it before. I decided in 2023, I was going to give the core pile a uh, rating a shot, which gives you points from zero to 10, I believe. And um, I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna go chronologically in order of the books that I read, five books I think that I read in January. And let's go. I read Sundial. I finished reading Sundial in January. I started this in December. This is the story of Rob who takes her oldest oldest of two daughters back to her childhood home uh, in the desert. And we have both a timeline in the present where she fears that her daughter has inherited something from her that is essentially bad. Um, and she's gone back to her home to sort of cure that or deal with that, we don't really know. And then there's a second timeline of her as a teenager growing up with um, in, in this home. Um, the atmosphere I feel like this one about, well, the atmosphere of this one I feel like is the strength of this book. So when I go into the different points that I get to assign, I feel like atmosphere will be strong. But I cared to a different extent about the two different timelines. I thought some of the described domestic violence was a bit gratuitous. And there was a third element of the book where we have little snippets of the, the novel that Rob is working on. And I thought that was completely unnecessary. So I will just type in what I need to do to get the ratings. We have Sundial here. I'll fill out publisher and stuff like that later. I read it and as a physical book. Yeah, like I said, all of this I will fill in later. Pages read, blah, blah, blah. We don't really need this right now. Main genre, I will worry about later. It's been, um, no, I will select horror because that's what I've seen most often um, chosen for the book. Although hmm, I don't feel too comfortable about this. I think it's like a psychological thriller I don't know I find I'm not sure about horror I'm not too sure about the horror genre how to sort of rate that anyway um blah 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 all of this later characters so we have Rob her daughters she talks about her husband she talks about her family that she grew up with and I thought they were all a bit one dim interesting but one dimensional so what do I give that like a six the atmosphere I thought was strong with the desert setting um, and I did feel like I could sort of imagine everything really quite well. Um, I'll give that an eight. The writing style. I think this will be the most difficult for me to judge because I do, I, I remember if I absolutely loved a writing style, I remember if I absolutely hated it and everything in between sort of if I don't stumble about it too much then I think that's a good thing I feel like I liked the writing but I really hated the I, I did actually hate the parts where she has these excerpts of what is the novel that she's writing so I'm gonna like deduct points for that and also give that a six plot I was like intriguing oh it's starting to calculate the average rating how exciting the plot started off hmm, sort of lost it a bit for me and we also a six I don't know I feel like I'm being really ruthless intrigue I didn't it the intrigue started off really high but then <laughs> so hard this is a horror novel so I feel like I feel like it should be intriguing. I'm judging it more harshly because I feel like there are books where I don't expect a sort of page turnery aspect, but I'm fine with that. And because I feel like this should have had it, I'm more upset about the fact that it wasn't, didn't have that high intrigue. Um, but I guess also six, I don't know, logic, six, 
enjoyment. Six. I don't know. This is like a really weird. This this is illustrating how bad I am at rating books because there's very little nuance in all of this. Enjoyment. Six. Average rating of five point no six point two nine. Checks out as three and a half stars. Can I live with that? I think I can live with that. Yeah, interesting. Anything else interesting right now? Buddy, I, it was a buddy read, da da da, date read, yeah, all of that I'll fill in later. Excellent. Interesting. Interesting. Six is three and a half, sort of. I feel like that could have been, could have been even harsher, maybe. Let's just roll with that, though. Next, I read Legends and Lattes, which, um, I've been super hyped. I stumbled across this quite a lot on Instagram, on like people's book around posts. Um, I also listened to an interview with the author, Travis Baldry, on some podcast or another that I like to listen to. I'm not sure if it was on Reading Glasses. Was it a different podcast? I don't remember. This is sort of cozy fantasy where a main character, Viv, who is um, an orc barbarian, quits her job and the dangerous lifestyle to open up a, her own coffee shop which has been her wildest dream for a long time and that's the story so we accompany her on the trials of tribulations of opening up your own small business um and the sort of characters that accompany her on the way um i feel like this is at the same time overhyped and justifiably hyped because this story is not it's i don't know it's not life-changing but it is also amazing sometimes to just read something that is pure there's a little love story but it's not on the cent at the center of it um the the characters are really what i love most about this so that's why i'm this is gonna score highly for that and it was also just a really enjoyable read um yeah, just really sweet. Um, the cover originally featured Viv and the, I forgot her name now, uh, doesn't matter, the woman, uh, woman creature <laughs> um, that sort of is sort of becomes like her partner, main sort of manager of the store. Um, yes. Let's, let's see how I feel about this one, shall we? Legends and Lattes. I also read in a physical format. Main genre, let's say, fantasy. And characters, I loved, loved the characters. Do I just join the hype train and also give characters 10? let's say nine, because there were like some characters that were sort of like the baddies that I would have liked a little bit more nuance on. Atmosphere. I mean, you do really get this atmosphere. I have this obsession of having like wintry coffee shop scenes running on the screen um, whilst I like bustle around at home. And I feel like this paired perfectly with that. So atmosphere, seven. No, oh, so hot. Seven or eight, seven or eight. Let's say, let's say seven. Writing, also say seven. For me, this was like not a breakout, but there was nothing that I disliked. Um, it was fine. Plot, I mean, like, let's also say six. The plot is not why you read this. Intrigue, say also six i can't like comparing it with sundial i enjoyed reading it more but like the plot is not the most amazing thing logic <laughs> still logic check out i don't know seven Ugh. enjoyment 10 yeah what does that add up to a 7.43 four stars actually i think that is a really accurate rating it was already working out better for me than me having to try to decide on um, star ratings. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I think I would have. I, I 
I'm tending to think Sundial, I would have given a little bit less than 3.5 and four stars for Legends of the Letters, I think is pretty accurate. Yeah, next, I read Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Um, and let's just type that in, why don't we? Our Wives Under the Sea. Um, this, I have also seen categorized as horror but I think it's more sort of like weird literary fiction. <laughs> mm. So I will ponder, I will ponder the genre later, I think. It won't take you long for that. I, that'll just, that'll just be painful to watch me try to decide. Um, and characters, I'm going to say, oh no, let's talk about what this is about, sorry. This is about Miri and Le Leah. Um, a couple who, I always mix up Miri and Le Leah, which one's which. Yes, okay, Leah is a marine biologist and she returns home from a um, submarine excursion six months later than planned. Something's happened deep down in the water. She's come back, she's not quite the same anymore. And we get Leah's story of, time in the submarine and we get Miri's story of how she coped with not knowing what was happening to her partner, missing her, um, grieving her, although she's just assumed missing, you don't really know what's happened to her, and then dealing with her partner coming back home changed. Um, and it is, I thought it was a very sad love story, actually. That's how I would sort of peg it. We, we, we really get a feeling for how these two women, even though they have such different experiences and are so removed from each other, both physically, psychologically, not emotionally, they, um, yeah, they go through two really almost like a posed experiences but really keep the other person on their mind, relive memories, um, try to adapt sort of to a new normal but mourn the past. I don't know. I thought this was a really touching parable, is that the English word, um, on sort of how how relationships change and how we deal with the sadness of a relationship changing maybe not being made to last um I, I don't know this this actually moved me much more than I was expecting it's a bit weird um just sort of you have to sort of accept some of the surrealist aspects of it I guess um almost sort of almost body horror aspects but not really I don't know I don't know I don't I can't touch on that a bit more without really spoiling the reading experience it's not very long um this was um the 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 the, the book pick for January from a like online book club that I've joined afternoonified book club you can find it on Instagram and the fable app um run by Claudine and um yeah, I don't know. This has a, this has a spe special little place in my heart. Um, and I, on the, on, the, on the book club discussion, I gave this five stars. And somehow I feel like the Corpal rating won't necessarily um, reflect that. Characters were surface level but I love I, I felt for them a lot so eight atmosphere I'm gonna say ten like I could feel the grief I could feel like I was sitting in the submarine I could feel that I was in the apartment that belongs to Leah and Miri and the sort of claustrophobia of sadness ten writing There were some gems in there, but like just like eight. I don't know. Plot. Not that much happens, but I really enjoyed it. But plot, 
seven. I don't know. Intrigue. I feel like the intrigue was super high for me at all times. And then I, I like the ending, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't quite do the intrigue justice, but I was very intrigued for most of it. Am I gonna give it an eight? Am I gonna give it a nine? Am I give it an eight? Am I gonna give it a nine? Eight. Logic? I mean, how do you rate logic on like a surreal story? But I mean, the, 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 the sort of storylines, we get perspectives from Miri, we get perspectives from Leah. They do kind of make sense. I feel like the timeline makes sense. A lot sort of doesn't make sense, but we also don't know what lives under the sea, hundreds and hundreds of kilometers under the street. Um, logic. <laughs> this is not a book that is about logic, but I don't want to like, as a craft of the book, I should say seven. Oh, enjoyment, 10. That checks out at 8.29 or 4.5 stars, which, yeah, I mean, 4.5, less than the five, obviously, but I think I'll have to ponder the logic a little bit. Um, there is a cheat sheet. How does Brooke Rose enjoy the logic? Uh, you follow the rules. Do you know if it makes sense? Plot holes. Actually, maybe I can actually just bunch up logic to like eight because there were no like mistakes or anything. Does that change anything? Eight point two nine. Okay, let's just stick with that. I'm comfortable with that. Then next, as a digital book, I read a book called Hermann vom klugen Umgang mit dem inneren Kritiker. Um, German book, obviously, non-fiction about um, the inner critic and how he messes with our brain, how we can deal with the inner critic. Cri Tick in a critic um, and be less miserable if we deal with him differently. Um, it's a very short, quick read. I haven't researched whether it's been translated into English. Sorry, I read it on my Kindle and it was actually free in like the unlim Kindle Unlimited, which I had like for another month or so. Have I have I cancelled that? I think I've cancelled that. Um, not like amazingly impressed by the book to be honest um but i thought it was interesting well a i've read it and it's all interesting to see how rating non-fiction will work we'll actually put horror in there i'm bummed that yeah sorry non-fiction how on from klugen umgang mit dem inneren kritiker by an author called tom diesbrock um so we get to try out this cheat for non-fiction instead of characters we are rating credible credibility and research this one I'm going to rate very low on credibility and research because there was literally, there, there were like no like resources or it's very much like psychological babble <laughs> about your inner critic. But like I want resources, citations, um, a few theories or models and not just and this is how I think about this topic um, and like how man is a German name of, of yeah a name of, so the idea is that your inner critic is Hermann you like give your inner critic a name this in itself is a method used sort of in counseling personifying an emotion um or or a feeling that you're carrying around with you that way you can address a person deal with this side that you have to you without it becoming sort of all consuming. The idea makes sense, but it it's not explained in any form. Um, so as far as nonfiction goes um, about psych psychological topic, um, I thought that was very um, meager. So um, yeah, credibility research, I'm gonna give this like a three. Hmm. Atmosphere, I mean, five you do sort of 
very much understand what he's talking about. There are lots of illustrations. Um, I feel like you read this and um, this was recommended that, to me that I read it because my inner critic is someone who I give a lot of space. Um, so I, I did feel like I could like recognize myself in it quite a bit, but is this even atmosphere? No, authenticity, uniqueness. Yeah, checks out, whatever. Writing, right? It's very readable. So I didn't like it. I thought it was like too easy. So I'm also going to give that a five, like too colloquial. I think a lot of people, when they want nonfiction, they want something that is like readable, but I felt like this was like almost dumbed down. Plot in nonfiction is translated to like personal impact. See, I wanted this to be high because I was reading it for the personal reasons of me not dealing with my inner critic very well um and almost nothing has stuck with me three um what's i just intrigue just of how how intrigue just intrigue how does she explain ah uh, intrigue for non-fiction were you reaching for the book throughout and did it keep your attention I mean, I think I read it in like one or two sittings and it did keep my attention. Six, but also whatever. L is logic, informativeness. It was lot it was it was logical towards sort of the second half, there's sort of like recommendations for like what you can do. So seven and enjoyment i really can't claim i enjoyed it too much i didn't hate it but i just i don't know say four like no actually i didn't four it's like a three three stars that's still quite a lot i feel like that should be lower i'm not too pleased with that but so if i'm not in, pleased with that i guess i can change the four to a three because I'm not agreeing with that rating. What does that change? Change it to a two and a half. Yeah. Changes it to a two and a half. What else would I shave off a few points for intrigue? Let's shave off some of intrigue because I read it quickly, but I would have probably DNF'd it if it was a long book. Two, two and a half. Stick with that. It's all right. Am I alright with that? 4.29. I feel like 4.29. 4.29 from out of 10 to me is a poor rating. Like if I'm thinking like, like I did my bachelor's course in the Netherlands and a 4.29 wouldn't have been a passing grade. But 2.29 five for me is like well that's half of like five that feels like a better rating i'm overthinking this let's move on shall we um the final book that i wrote uh, wrote i wish the final work i read in january was the shadow of the wind by uh carlos ruiz afon this has been translated from spanish by a woman called i wrote it down lucia guav Guaves or Lucia Guaves. I don't know. I could have looked up the pronunciation. I didn't. I'm sorry, Lucia. Um, Graves. Graves. Lucia Graves. Hmm. Um, this was a gift from my friend Anna. This is the first in a series, but you can very comfortably just read this one. And I think I won't continue because I loved how it ended. This is the story of Daniel, son to an uh an antiquarian book dealer who um lives in barcelona it's set in the 40s and 50s and he chooses finds a book by an author called julian carax or, or julian carax i don't know i oh god please please don't hate me for not taking the time to figure out how the spanish pronunciations of this are. I had two years of Spanish in high school um, at the peak 
of my most moody teenage years. So I hated absolutely everything and didn't put any effort in. So this is me um, reverting back to that state, apparently. Um, he, sorry, sorry, so Daniel, our main protagonist, um, our protagonist finds a book by this author and sets out to unravel the mystery behind this author and why all his books are have sort of disappeared. And he seems to have one of the last remaining novels. And um, we, yeah, we, we follow Daniel on this path um, with sort of some side characters that are really great. Um, we, we love his father. Um, his father, upon Daniel's request, employs um, a man who's been living on the street, um, Femin, Femin, something like that. Um, who I it's, it's such an unlikely character but I loved how this adult man who has seen so much um, sort of strikes up this friendship and camaraderie with this teenage boy and and we do actually f accompany Daniel um, as he gets a little bit older um, the setting of Barcelona is great um, let's see how I rate this, shall we? Um, the Shadow of the Wind. Um, I'm always unsure what to capitalise in English. <laughs> um, the Shadow of the Wind. Shall we say historical fiction? Sure. Uh, characters. Um, at least eight. Maybe even more. Let's say... No, let's say eight. There is a little bit of one dimensionality when it comes to the women, <laughs> um, which I will forgive. But you've got to do more than that with your female characters if you want more than eight points, I think. Atmosphere. Oh, oh I've never been to Barcelona, but now I kind of want to. I feel like there was like rain, rainy moodiness and... Um, Oh, I feel the echo through the cobbled stone in the 40s in Barcelona. Um, uh, atmosphere, eight, eight, nine? Let's say nine. Writing, I actually loved, but I thought the writing was really strong. Nine. Plot, nine. Intrigue, eight. Logic, seven enjoyment i really got into it but i needed it quite a while to go in so i'm going to say enjoyment seven and that can equals out at a 4.5 rating and i feel like that's higher than i would have given it i would have given it four which obviously we do get the full points hey that seems like quite a high rating but i also maybe i'll just allow that <laughs> um yeah why not let's just say that's all right um, oh, and that was all the books that I read. Well, that was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Um, yeah, those were the books that I read. And this is my first time ever filling out the Corpile um, XL sheet. Interesting. So cool. I'm going to love watching these, um, like the stats filled out. I will fill out all the rest, all the like information, publication year, yada, 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 all of that. So I will get some data as I move on, but this is so cool. Check out Book Roast's video explaining the whole core power method. She's in the fourth version now. Um, and I'm gonna try to do this um, this year and see whether that gives me a little bit more confidence in rating all the books that I read. Try out core power, why don't you? Figure out your book ratings a little bit and let me know how it goes for you. Have a really nice day. I'll see you soon, bye.